Whoever sows to please the Spirit by the Spirit will reap eternal life. Feed your spirit today by this life transforming message. There are five biblical keys that the Bible gives the believer as the keys that will help them to experience victory in spite of or in the midst of challenges. Are you ready for the five keys? Pray in the spirit for one minute and ask the Lord to open your understanding. Give us understanding even by your word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, the righteous businessman, the righteous apostle, the righteous prophet, the righteous mother, the righteous student, the righteous politician, even the righteous nation. Hallelujah. Key number one. Key number one. Are you ready? The first key that the Bible gives, now you must understand that the word of God is not a recommendation. That the word of God is not an opinion. It may look like a recommendation. It may look like an opinion. But for the believer who wants to walk perpetually in victory, the word of God is life. The word of God is instruction. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. It says, do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your, your, your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It said, they are life. Not to everybody. To those that find them and health even to their flesh so you must take the word of god as final authority as touching anything the word of god presents the mind of god concerning any and all matters are we together number one the first key any believer any righteous person who is going through a season of affliction doesn't matter what it is called the first recommendation from scripture is to look unto jesus please write as simple as that sounds do not assume you understand what i'm saying just write and listen to look on to jesus to look on to jesus now we can read psalm 34 beginning from verse 1 look on to jesus it says i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth verse 2 my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear of and hear thereof and be glad verse 3 it says oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together for i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears five it says they looked unto him is that in your bible and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed verse six it says the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles reading to 10 the angel of the lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them verse 8 it says oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man that trusted in him verse 9 oh fear the lord ye his saints for there is no want to them that fear him final verse the young lions do lack and suffer hunger it says but they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing say loud amen, amen. hallelujah so the bible says to look unto jesus you find that in hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 looking unto jesus he says the author and the finisher of our faith please look up i can tell you it is very difficult to look unto jesus in the face of challenges tribulations what does it mean to look now pay attention to look means to direct one's gaze and focus towards someone or something that's what it means to look to look means to direct one's gaze to direct one's focus away from other things towards someone or towards something but then to look also means to rely on or to depend totally upon when the bible says look unto jesus Number one, it means to set your gaze upon him, not wavering whatsoever. But number two, it means to depend and rely totally upon him. Even when you do not understand him, look unto Jesus. The biblical recommendation 
for managing seasons and moments of affliction. Look unto Jesus. The Bible says, there is a very strange and interesting story. You find that in Numbers chapter 21 from verse 4 down to 9. The Bible talks about the nation of Israel that when they came by the way of the Red Sea, the Bible says to compass the land of Edom. The soul of the people was discouraged because they kept walking endlessly and it looked like there was no victory, no rest for them. They were hungry, they were angry and the trouble started from verse 5. Reading to verse 9. The people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, there is no water and our soul loathed this light bread. Verse 6, the Bible says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. He says, pray unto the Lord that he takes away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. How did God answer the prayer? The Lord instructed Moses and said, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten when he looketh upon it shall leave. What kind of an instruction is that? What is the relationship between a serpent, a brazen serpent, and healing, and life, and victory? It was not about the serpent. He was teaching them that there is life and dominion in trusting God's plan, in trusting God's way. As foolish as it is, once it is God that has spoken, he's saying even in the midst of the fiery serpents, the wisest thing to do in front of a snake is to run away, not to look. Hallelujah. It is stupid for someone to sit down and watch a serpent curl around you. Are we together now? And it's about to kill you. The wisest human instruction is to run away, not to look at some serpent somewhere. And yet, that is the foolishness of God's path. He was teaching them that the ways of God may not make sense, but in them there is life. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and leave. Apostle, you have no idea what is happening in my life right now. It's on account of my faith in Jesus that I'm in this trouble right now. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. To depend upon him. Psalm 1, 2, 3 from verse 1 and 2. 1, 23, 1 and 2. The Bible says, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes. O thou that dwellest in the heavens, verse 2, it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servant look upon the hand of their masters, it says, And as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon thee, O Lord, until that he have mercy upon us. Can I tell you? There's no time, but probably let me just give you three scriptures that helps us to know why should you look unto Jesus. Number one is found in Psalm 127. I hope I've not lost you. We're still looking at the first reason or the first recommendation from scripture to look to Jesus. Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 says, except the Lord builds a house. I am showing you why you need to look unto Jesus, that they labor in vain that build it, and except the Lord keepeth the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. Verse 2 says, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Why do we need to look unto Jesus? Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. It says, It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. That means no matter what else you do, you can stretch your human imagination from border to border. If God does not show you mercy, everything you are doing will end up being moving around in circles. Hallelujah. 
Why do we need to look unto Jesus? Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken once and twice have ye heard that power belongeth to God. When you look unto Jesus, you are looking unto the only person, the only God who has the power to do something about your situation. My Bible tells me some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our God. This is true. Men can want to help. They may be sincere on that, but do they have the power? Hallelujah. Someone say, look unto Jesus. Let me give you one more scripture. Why do you need to look unto Jesus? At times of adversary, at times of pain. Psalm 133 from verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is. Psalm 113, my apologies, 113, 113, 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye his, the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2. It says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forever. Verse 3. It says, From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Uh -huh. We're reading to verse 9. The Lord is high above all the nations and his glory above the heavens. Watch this now. It says, Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? Verse 6. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and are in earth? 7. Who raised the poor? I'm showing you why you need to look unto Jesus. God is the only one who can raise men, the poor, out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That he may set him to sit with princes, even the princes of his people. Verse 9. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. This is what he can do. When you look unto Jesus, it may sound like foolishness in the midst of challenges because there are many times I have taught you here when God is silent, the most difficult phase in the believer's life is when God is silent. Even though he is the word, there are times God is mysteriously silent. And I've taught you that the silence of God is also a language. You must know what God is saying when he's not speaking. Because when God is not speaking, he's saying something. Look unto Jesus. Now let me give you a word of caution. We're looking at five keys. And the Spirit of God had to put it in my heart to write this down. According to Matthew 11 and verse 6, it says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Can I tell you? If you've not had the temptation to be offended in God, it's either you are really a baby or you've not lived long enough on this earth. Because there are moments in your life when you feel, it's, it's almost as if you feel cheated for loving Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Watch this. John was the prophet who ordained Jesus to ministry. It was revealed to John. John had the secret code that would identify Jesus. When he saw Jesus by prophecy, he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Now John is locked up, caught see Herodias, the daughter as a birthday gift. He was locked up and was about to be beheaded in anger. When the disciples came to him, you know what he said? The same person who identified Jesus, who announced him, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That is what offense can do. The man who ordained Jesus in ministry, in fact, he trained some of the disciples who would later be the disciples of Jesus. And yet he said, Jesus, for I, I've, 
my pain vetoes every vision I have about you. My pain vetoes anything God told me about you. I am in a moment of pain. You claim to be the Messiah and now I am locked up in prison and you do not even have the courtesy to come and visit me. I hear a rumor that as a birthday gift, my head is going and you do not even show any sign of concern. Take that message to your Jesus. The disciples come to Jesus in a crusade ground and say, sir, we don't mean to embarrass you, but there's a serious situation. The man who announced you most, the man who cried out and said he was the voice who was sent to bear witness to you is in total doubt of you right now. What can destroy a man's ministry more than somebody who loved you and endorsed you openly and is now saying, go, I'm not even sure of what I laid hands on. And the Bible says, Jesus, with calmness and intelligence, he turned and began to lay hands, healed a few people. He said, go and tell John what you see. The blind see, the deaf hear, and so on and so forth. The gospel is preached. Then he says, 11 verse 6 now, blessed is he whoso, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Lord, where were you when I was losing my job? Where were the angels of protection when my loved one was being attacked by terrorists or died in a car crash? I don't mean to get you emotional, but I'm just, I'm discussing on the afflictions of the righteous. Lord, where were you when for the sake of my integrity as a man of God, I seem to have gone down? Where were you when Potiphar's wife was all around Joseph and because of his integrity, he didn't go to the palace, he went to the prison. The afflictions of the righteous. How do you explain Joseph holding a woman's, uh, the wife's, um, what they call it now? Her veil or whatever it is he was holding. How could he say that he did not have anything to do with her? That was evidence enough. And yet God was watching in heaven. How do you explain Hannah crying year after year? going to Shiloh. How do you explain that? How do you explain God's people under the rule and bondage of the Egyptians? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Let me tell you this. The believer is not a believer because of results. The believer is a believer because you have committed yourself to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Look unto Jesus is the first biblical recommendation i've had very painful experiences in the lives of people as i as i serve the purposes of god and sometimes you know when they can't see jesus you who is the closest to him based on what they perceive whatever they would have told him is what they tell you hallelujah since i cannot see jesus you claim to be the one who has come in his name you better be prepared to help me convey to jesus and I will tell you loud and clear, where was he when this happened? I know many people who I called in maybe the face of bereavement and whatever. And I say, can we say a word of prayer? And they say, apostle, with all due respect, please do not talk to me about anything prayer now. And I know that they don't mean it. It's just what pain can do. Hallelujah. I heard about the story of someone who had an accident and he had to rush out and he stood watching his car burn and it burned to ashes. There was absolutely nothing he would have done. And that was a car that was like two months old. What was the value of dedicating the car in church? They poured oil on that car and it still burnt after two months. How about the business of believers that went down from COVID? And some of those people were great sponsors of the gospel. Now, just follow me. I'm a good pilot who will land well. You just follow me. Hallelujah. Mm. How about a man of God who gathered sick people and shouted in the name of the Lord that they will be healed and laid hands on them one by one till they arrested him and threw him out of that place. And he left that crusade ground as if he was living a funeral. Where is the Jesus I kept shouting and talking about? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just playing with words, nor am I playing with your mind. I'm revealing something that may be someone's situation right now. 
and you know in the midst of challenges you forget every title you have you forget every even Jesus wept very disturbing scripture John 11 35 if you see Jesus weeping will you not cry to that means you are in trouble John 11 35 the comforter of those who were always weeping is now weeping it doesn't matter why he's weeping the fact that you saw tears coming out of his eyes hallelujah life wept hope wept victory wept the fountain of wisdom wept weeping always carries a a picture of limitation when people weep it seems to communicate hopelessness or despair and the Bible says Jesus wept as God he never cried but when he became a man he cried Jesus was angry the Bible does not hide his frustrations he went into the temple and flogged people in anger he caused a fig tree because he was hungry and came to the tree and the tree would not deliver and he caused that tree look to Jesus listen to me there will be moments in your life where you truly will not be able to find answers intellectually that's why there is a realm of peace that surpasses all understanding that means that peace is beyond the realm of arguing what is this what is that remember at the apex of 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 job's problem the wife was even confused she said curse god and die and job said no why do you speak like one of these foolish women he said all the days of my appointed time i will wait i don't know what is happening to me different people came and started communicating several opinions and Ellie who one time shot them and he said you guys I respect you I wanted to speak but I have a limitation in age he said but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty make it men of understanding Job himself who encouraged himself in the Lord got to a point where he was angry and when you read chapter 38 the Bible said he summoned God he said God I have finished comforting myself we need to talk please come and explain to me the reason behind this pain and the Bible says God came in a whirlwind and a discussion began 